Make your home more comfortable, more stylish, more dramatic. Make your home more beautiful and energy efficient. Philips Lighting makes it easy to select the right light. Now you can transform your home and your energy bill. Philips. Sense and simplicity. I have to say that most people in general, when they think about lighting, that you're either thinking about theater and concerts, spectacles, or interiors. So when I realized that, I also realized that public lighting combines government and social policy and, and economic policy and technology, you know, really is a bit different than our lighting in our homes and hotels and restaurants and spaces. My objective as a lighting designer and a public lighting designer, really a lighting urbanist, is to create spaces for people to relate to each other, to have a great time, to kind of increase the mental health of people who live in cities after dark. I have an idea that the city itself is home. Therefore, the places that we create are rooms in this home. And if citizens see the city as home, then they will share that with those who make policies and those who design the city to make a better home. In the mid-90s, uh, the Port Authority and the Community Board here in Manhattan came together to discuss an aesthetic change to the triple bridge or the bus ramps. A task force elicited responses from the neighborhood and then compiled those into design guidelines. The design guidelines were attached to a request for proposals for architects. I joined one of the architectural teams and we won the competition. And so then the work of envisioning the project began and my initial take on this darkened, compressed space of the bus ramps was to create a luminous room in the city. Now you have to understand this was the darkest, dismalest, pigeon infested, you know, space, so to envision a luminous room was pretty exciting. One of the ways that we accomplished the luminous room was to create a set of reflectors that would point light onto the ground. Now this is pretty unusual because <laughs> how many projects have you seen with a carpet of light in the middle of a roadway? There is a lot of light cast onto the underside of the bus ramps, which we think of as our ceiling. In most projects, a park, a plaza, it's really the horizontal space that we're talking about. And we're creating that room through the definition of light. Light creates boundaries where light is cast. The Triple Bridge Gateway is a very particular situation where you have, in a sense, a real ceiling and real walls and a real floor. There are two public spaces in New York City that bear discussion about the luminous rooms in the city. One is Bryant Park and the other is Times Square, and they're quite opposite to each other. Bryant Park is not only successful during the day, but Bryant Park is very successful in the evening. There are moonlights literally coming off a building that light the entire park and create shadows of the trees and the branches onto the ground. Now, this texture is so fantastic. It's a little more like sunlight. It's that richness of the daytime repeated through the designer's approach at night. From a lighting designer's point of view, there's something really interesting about Times Square, which is that bright light is mandated. So it's actually been legislated in the sense that each shop has to have a minimum of bright light and flickering light, whereas in other cities there are maximums. But what's interesting is that through that legislation we have a world of bright light and experiments with LED and experiments with innovative, interactive light signs. New York and Times Square has become so successful that it's overcrowded. And one of the responses of the Department of Transportation in New York is to create a pedestrianized Times Square, that is a plaza. And so this experiment has been running for the past year. And now the city has decided to make a permanent plaza. And thankfully, Light Projects, my company, is one of a big group of designers 
that will be working on the new pedestrianized Times Square. We are led by Snow Hedda, the architects from Norway, and this is the way a team is assembled to create a new urban space. This is a really good time for lighting and cities and that marriage of night in the cities. What is happening today is there are cities all over the world who are identifying with their luminous plan. Now you can be a city of light and really promote that idea through festivals, art, building facades, walking tours, simply the principle that light can galvanize social relationships, can create places for people to interact in simple human ways, having nothing to do with technology and you know, wild ideas, but simply valuing public space, valuing the nighttime environment. Put those two things together and you have public lighting now and in the future.